again. Um, last time we looked at um, the oxygen requirements. We're going to continue with that today. So we're looking at several different ways to determine oxygen requirements. One of the things that I want to point out, it is a very difficult to um, determine oxygen requirements because it's hard to get an anaerobic environment, especially if you don't have all the tools that you need. So with the previous lab we had taken and put in, put in, <laughs> put in, we have taken and put the microbes into that medium that was solidified or was liquid and then we cooled it and solidified it. And with that you're going to be looking at the growth patterns. Are they growing on top, in the middle, and trying to determine their oxygen requirements. We're going to do that again this week. So this way, this week we're going to look at two different ways of growing anaerobic bacteria or bacteria and looking at their oxygen requirements. One of them is to use what's called a reducing medium. Remember that oxidation meant to um, release electrons and hydrogens and reduction meant to grab onto things and reduce them, meaning taking them out of the environment and binding them to a molecule. And it's the atmospheric oxygen that's floating around which determines whether or not that microbe can survive or not. And with a reducing medium, that reducing medium will pull the oxygen, the O2, out of the environment and hold on to it and make it part of its molecule. The thioglycolate tube is a reducing medium. The other way that you can grow, um, try to grow anaerobic bacteria is to put them on a plate and then grow them in an anaerobic jar. The book describes this method of using a gas pack, an anaerobic jar, a system that we actually do not have. Okay? We have this wonderful high-tech method, um, which is basically a pickle jar with a candle in it. We do the best we can at getting an anaerobic environment, but it doesn't always get all the oxygen out. The idea is we kind of use the candle to kind of take the oxygen out of the jar, and they'll probably be, be replaced by a little bit of CO2. However, look at the gas pack system in the book and be aware of how it works and understand how it takes the oxygen out and it'll use hydrogen and it'll form water. So you'll see um, condensation on the inside. So what you're gonna do this time is what we've done several times before. You're gonna use your sterile technique, your gloves, your goggles will be used and you will take your bacteria. Now this time we have four. So you'll have four thioglycolate tubes, one for each bacteria. And then you'll have two plate or four plates. The plates, however, you're going to have two plates that are going to be grown aerobically and two plates that will be growing anaerobically. So um, two on all plates, you'll divide them in half. And you're going to put two bacteria on each plate and you'll repeat it on the other two plates. And so these two that have the two, four bacteria split in half, two on each side, will have, will be grown aerobically, and this other one will be put in the candle jar, okay? So with your thioglycolate, one of the things that it says is, I don't know if you can notice or not, but this has a pinkish color to it. The pink is representative of the fact that there is oxygen currently in this tube. So ideally, you do not want to have that pink color it says to boil it off, but I've asked the lab techs to boil it off ahead of time so that we're getting tubes that do not have pink in them, okay? You know that the reducing medium is working well if you don't see the pink. The pink is an oxygen indicator. If you see just the normal tan color of the medium, that means that the oxygen has been reduced. So we don't want to see the pink color. Um, the book actually describes methylene blue also as an indicator of oxygen that is used in that gas pack system. Once again, we have our wonderful system here. All right, so you're going to take the four bacteria with your inoculating loop using your sterile technique, put one bacteria into each of these tubes. The thing that you want to avoid is when you put the inoculum down into the tube, don't shake it too much like we've done in the past. Just put it all the way down to the bottom, maybe give it a little bit of a twirl to get the bacteria off, but shaking is going to introduce oxygen, and we don't want to do that. So once again, with good sterile technique, you're going to be taking this lid off for as little as possible. You really want to be aware of that now because the longer the lid is off, the more oxygen that will get in it. So do not go to put the bacteria in there until they're labeled. Everything is ready. You've sterilized the loop. 
and the very last thing you're going to do is pull this lid off. Now in the past, I've told you to leave the lids loose, but because we're trying to make an anaerobic environment, you want to tighten the lids completely. Not to the point where you can't get them off, but don't do that quarter turn back and keep them loose. So for those, you'll have one bacteria in each tube, you'll have four tubes. For the plates, you have split them in half, you have four plates, and you're going to put one bacteria on each side. Instead of doing the back and forth motion, do what we did with the differential media and just do a line because you don't want them growing into each other. The two plates that are going to be growing aerobically, you're basically just going to put in the incubator um, inverted like you always do. The two that are going to be grown anaerobically, you will put over on the little desk by our cart. I'll have the candle jar sitting there. You can just leave them on the desk. When I have all four of them, or not all four of them, when I have them for all of the groups, I'll put them in the candle jar, I'll light the match, I'll close the jar, and hopefully when the um, candle goes out, most of the oxygen is gone. Once again, it's not the best method, but it's the only one that we have. So the second lab, you'll look for growth. So if you see growth aerobically and not anaerobically, that's an anaerobic bacteria. If you see growth um, aerobically and anaerobically, then it could be a faculative anaerobe, it could be a microaerophile, it could be a um, aerotolerant. So then you want to look, well also, at the same time, you want to look at the tubes. Are they growing at the top? Are they growing at the top with a little bit coming down? Are they growing in the middle? Are they growing at the bottom? So you'll use both these results and the results of your plate to try to determine which category those fall into. Once again, keep in mind, it's hard to get an anaerobic environment, so if your results don't come out the way they should, um, that's something we'll discuss in class. Um, so I think that's the end of that one. All right.